I'm Christ to you, brothers and sisters. Um, today I want to speak about the five factors that John Piper said we should consider um, when calling out false teachers. Um, this was released, um, this was discussed on a podcast, the Ask Pastor John podcast, um, which was released on the 4th of October. That was Friday, last week Friday. So, um, the first factor is the seriousness and the deceitfulness of the error. So I'm going to split this one into two elements. The first element is the, the seriousness of the error. Um, one has to consider whether the person is attacking the fundamentals, the fundamental doctrines, or is he just, or is he introducing a new teaching that alters or maybe undermines the fundamentals? Or if you want, like, if you are interested in knowing what are the fundamentals, I have like a list of, um, I list seven on this YouTube channel. You can just check on the, uh, like, what this page is about on the section where it says what this page is about. So, in other words, so you must consider if the person is attacking the foundation of our faith. And then the second part of the first element of the first factor, which is the second element, is that the deceitfulness of the error. One has to consider how much truth is the person misrepresenting or twisting. And also, do the people whom this person is preaching to believe him? Do they believe what he's saying? And then the second factor is the size of the audience. Is it growing? So that's the second factor. Um, so in other words, how many followers does the person have? Or if not followers, how many people do? Like how many people listen to this man or this woman? Is he gaining more people by teaching this error? Are uh, like more people listening to him through this error? The, and then third is the duration of their ministry. Do they make one blunder? Or are they constantly doing it? Now, by duration of their ministry, I think this would mean that you have to check how long has the person been in ministry? And has he been teaching this error throughout his ministry? Or is this a mistake? Or can we, like as an observer or an objective person, can we consider this as a mistake? Or this is or this is the habit of the person. This is what he constantly teaches. And then the fourth one is the vulnerability of the people to whom he is teaching. Like the vulnerability, or oh sorry, the vulnerability of the people for whom you are responsible. Now, shepherds must protect the sheep. I think you have to consider the danger of the error here. The, the danger the error poses to the people whom you are trying to warn. And also, could this be a stumbling block to the audience that listens to the man or a woman whom you are trying to expose as a false teacher? So let's, if you remember what the Lord said um, to Peter before ascending to heaven in John 21, 15 to 17. So the, the passage goes like this. It says, when they have finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, <clears throat> he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Then the last factor is the role you have, the role you have in influencing shepherds who really need to be discerning, who really need to be discerning for who the false teachers are. So that's the last factor. 
So after giving these five factors, Pastor John follows by saying this, and I quote, when you do name a false teacher, it's best to do it in a setting where you do where you do more than naming where you do more than name drop. You explain the error. You give reasons for rejecting it. You communicate the complexities. You set a tone of longing for truth and love. You're not just slinging mud. End quote. So what I will do, I will put um, the link to the Ask Pastor John podcast on the description below. I'll also put the link um, to the podcast in their website, Desiring God. Um, so what I wanted to say is naming false teachers is not an unbiblical thing to do. However, we must be careful of calling people false teachers for non-fundamental doctrines. You can point out what someone, like what they are doing wrong, but do not be in a hurry to declare someone a false teacher. Like Piper gave us these factors as a, as a, like as guidelines on how we should go about calling false teachers or false prophets. Um, this is what I wanted to speak about today, brothers and sisters. Um, thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. Um, I know I have not been posting like every week. It's because I've been busy with some personal stuff. But I will try and post at least once a week, like I promised on the introduction podcast. Um, thank you very much.